So you're in a sales conversation or you're in multiple of them and you're going about your business, but all of a sudden you recognize that your conversion rates are really low. If this has ever happened to you, then this is gonna be the video that you wanna tune into. What's happening, Sales Ascender? Sean here, and I'm back with another high ticket tune up. Uh, today's Thursday. I hope you're having a great week so far. And we have just a wonderful, wonderful question. And again, this is going to go around this whole thing of are your conversion rates low, right? A lot of people say, oh, Sean, my conversion rates are so low. Well, today I'm going to actually give you a three point checklist that you can use to double check how to increase your conversion rates. This is a very easy, systematic framework that anyone can use, and it's really going to help you out. This is more theory than it is uh, practical and tactical. Uh, but it is the greatest strategy that you'll be able to use when it gets to the game. So let's kind of dive into it. The question came from Rodney. Rodney asked this. He said, Sean, my conversion rates are low and I'm discouraged. What should I do? And I get this question all the time. And the first thing that I used to like to do when, when I hear this question is I start going in and dissecting. So like when I first started in sales, the first thing that I did is I would watch my own sales calls. So if you've never done that before, that is something that will completely open up your eyes to what you're saying, your body language, and just watching one sales call of your own. So if you're not recording them, I highly, highly encourage you to do that and then once you record one take the time to just sit down and um, watch it and then take notes like what did you like what did you dislike what are the things you're saying that are great what are the things that you're saying that you think you need some work on and this will help you to refine some of your messaging when you're in the conversation and the other thing that it will help you to do is to like recognize your body language people buy because of energy people buy because of confidence people buy because the person on the other end is convicted about solving the problem that they may have and so if you come to the party and you're the most convicted and you have the most just confidence around what it is you're doing and the problem that you can solve for people, people will listen to you and they'll follow you for sure. I know it because it's happened to me a million times and I've been on both sides of the fence. And so if your conversion rates are low, one of the things that I would highly encourage you to do is again, review your own sales call, but then also check your conviction level, check your confidence when you're in that call. Like, is it where if, if you were buying from yourself as you're watching your own video, would you buy from yourself, right? And so here's the three point checklist that I wanted to cover with you guys. Checkpoint number one, is a pre-filtering criteria. Again, this is if your conversion rates are low. This is one of the things that you're going to want to focus on. So you're going to want to focus on the first and the foremost is the pre-filtering criteria. You've heard that old uh, story of if you're making a cake and there's a little bit of poop in the recipe, then the cake's going to taste like poop and so you should never eat the cake. And so when I'm sharing the story, and maybe you've never heard that story, but it's like if you had all the massive, most amazing ingredients and you're going to build this amazing cake, then there's just a little bit of poop somewhere in the ingredients ingredients like I'm not gonna eat that cake you're probably not gonna eat it either right so something to think about is uh, good in equals good out poop in equals poop out and if that's the case then what we got to do is have some sort of a pre-filtering criteria on who we're talking to this is one of the reasons why I think the organ what people call organic attraction marketing falls on its face. Here's why. Somebody makes a hand raiser post. You've all seen the hand raisers post that you go into a group and somebody has some random question about the weather or some whatever, like what your winds are or anything like that. And that's fine. I think that works. It draws attention and it gets comments, it gets engagement. But here's the problem. There's no filter on the people that are responding or commenting or posting unless you put it into the system and you're in the first place. So, and so if you're doing that method and that's fine, like make a hand raiser post, people are going to comment, like, and share, and then you would reach out to them, hey, let's get in a conversation, maybe start a direct message, and then eventually get into a sales conversation and then hopefully close a deal. That's how most people teach the organic attraction marketing thing. Unfortunately, it creates low conversion rates. And the reason it does is because the people that are commenting, liking, and sharing might not be the exact person that you're looking for. And so if you are going to use this method, here's what I would encourage you to do. Put some sort of a pre-filter after somebody posts or likes or shares or comments on that post, because all you got to do is double check. So your pre-filtering criteria is so valuable for you because you can decide like, is this a person that I think would buy a product or service that I have to offer? And if you have that checklist, like in our world, we only sell B2B. We only sell to a certain niche of people. We only sell to people that have been in business for a certain period of time. We only sell to people that have all this other criteria. And before we even start messaging them or making hand raised posts or do anything, we make sure that they qualify or they fit on that criteria. Only then do we start the conversation. And when you do this, 
you're taking the poop out of the recipe and you're putting good in so that on the back end you'll have great that comes out you just have a higher probability so just putting a filter on the front end of your system is going to increase your conversion rate so that's the first conversion checklist checkpoint secondly is your sales combo system if you don't have a system to sell that's consistent predictable, and you can follow it every single time with every single prospect, you're in trouble. It's not your fault, but it's just the way that it goes. When I first started learning sales, everyone told me, hey, Sean, just go into the meeting and just share what you have. And then if they like it, they'll buy. Okay, well, that was my system, right? That's what I heard. I didn't do any research. I didn't have a coach at the time when I first started. So I dove in and I started doing that. I, I defaulted to what we call the prospect system. Prospect system is lie, steal, lie, hide, right? Let me say it again, lie, steal, lie, hide. There's four steps in the prospect system. It's lie, steal, lie, hide. Let me give you an example so it makes it real in your world. Let's say you're buying a big screen TV. You go into the store and we got your spouse with you and you're like, hey, we're gonna go uh, get some, you know, we're gonna go to the store. We're gonna check out this at Best Buy or whatever you're going to, to check out this TV. Go to the TV department, right? Your spouse leaves you as part of your pre-selected plan so that he can be over there she can be over there as kind of like an ambiguous third party case. The sales guy comes up and says, hey, uh, could I help you? What's your response? Lie. If it's a prospect system, it's like, oh, I'm just looking. I am just looking, right? You're gonna hear that all the time. Secondly, they're gonna say something like, you know, I, I'm just looking, but I'm interested in this television. And then the salesperson's gonna be like, oh my God, let me go show you all this stuff about it. And they bring you over and then they just unload all the feature benefit about the television that you're interested in. And so now you've stole all of the salesperson's information. Remember, lie, steal, lie, hide. So the next one is lie again. So at the end of this whole dumping of features and benefits, then the salesperson can turn around and say, hey, what do you think? I hate that line, but it's, what do you think? But you, if you're buying the television, be like, well, I think this is great. It kind of meets everything we're looking for then the salesperson is going to say, well, should we move forward and get you started? Then you're going to say, no, 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 no. Actually, I got to go check with my spouse. Lie, steal. That's another lie, right? Because you know you don't need to check with your spouse. You've already had the conversation when you came into the store that you're going to buy the TV, right? And then they hide. So now it's all, so yeah, no problem. I, I know you got to go speak with your spouse. And then you say, great. And then you go grab your spouse and you leave the store. And the salesperson is like, where'd you go? And now they can't make a sale. So lie, steal, lie, hide. That is the default prospect selling system. So if you don't have a sales system, you're in trouble because you're probably on that system and you didn't even know it. But now you know it, right? Now you know it, you got to do something about it. So checking your sales conversation system is going to be very important. There's a lot of different sales systems that are out there. I've gone through about 40 or 50 of them myself. And I looked at all like the common elements because I first started selling in business to government. Then I went into business to business. Then I went into business to consumer sales. Then I went back into business to business. I've been doing this for 20 plus years now. And so I understand like all the different sales systems that made sense. And there's some common elements and we pulled them all together into ours, which is called the sales ascension method. It's a seven point system that you can walk through any sales conversation from any place at any time. And it doesn't matter because it will work universally. So we have that system that we have and we share with our members. So we have a sales system system that is going to create a predictable path or pattern and you can look at your numbers. So if you have the right sales combo system, you're going to hit the second checkpoint, which is your conversions are going to go up. And the last thing, this is a pro tip. This is the one thing that I think most people miss out on, right? So is this thing called clear futures. This is a pro tip that you could use in any conversation. When you get to the end of the conversation, the one thing that you want to focus on is the next step. What is the clear future that you're going to be working with with your prospect in order to get them to keep moving forward? A lot of sales, especially when they get to higher ticket, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 100,000, a million dollar sales, the cycle or the process is going to just take a little bit longer. So what is a sales cycle? It's from first contact to close deal. That's the cycle time, the process is the steps in between that. And so if you know that, then the idea is, is that you have a process, you have a system, and each prospect has to follow along each checkpoint. So the idea of a clear future in every single sales conversation that you have is, hey, what's the next step that you got to give your prospect in order for them to keep moving in the right direction? This is how you create traction. This is how you create momentum. But most of all, this answers the question, again, if I were to go back to it, is are your conversion rates low? Because if your conversion rates low, that three point checklist is going to allow you to increase conversions at all times. Again, it's set up a pre-filtering criteria. So however you're doing your marketing, make sure you have some sort of a filter that you put the people that are coming through that system into your world. Make sure they fit, right? Secondly, have a selling system. If you don't have a selling system, you're probably
me in trouble, reach out to me. I'll love to have a conversation with you about that because that's a specialty of mine. And then lastly is make sure that every conversation that you're having, you set up the next step, the clear future for your prospects so they can keep marching forward. And don't get discouraged about your conversion rates being low, right? If you don't have any one of these three things in there, this will immediately help you. And again, what I mentioned at the beginning of the video is take the time to record your sales conversations and listen to them. Because if you listen to them, a couple of th it, it, it'll be glaringly as bright as day where you're like, oh, my body language sucked there. Oh, I'm saying the wrong thing here. Oh, this doesn't make sense to me. And you can make some adjustments really quickly on the fly. I love the self critiquing thing because most of the time people are so hard on themselves versus being hard on other people. And when your level of like 60 percent acceptance is going to be like 150 percent for somebody else so just know that because most people have this unrelenting standards uh life trap that they they struggle with but if you can get through that and you can watch your own it's really hard to do it the first time i'll tell you but once you've done it the first time then you can be on a path to understand what you need to tweak in your sales conversation make sure you have the steps in the process and when you put those three steps together again very simply is make sure you have a criteria a filtering criteria make sure you have the right system that you're using for selling make sure that each time you end a conversation you say what's the next step moving forward these things will allow you to move forward and have higher conversion rates so with that said i i hope that helped that laura said hey i've never heard of that that's awesome with that said you guys are awesome and i'm looking forward to seeing you next time <laughs>